This video is brought to you by Brilliant. Well, it happened. A longtime iPhone user purchased the newest Galaxy S23 Ultra. This shall be an interesting day for sure, since there's a lot to unpack, test, and most of all set up since I come up from a world of iOS and Apple exclusive apps. Two hours, they are very similar to last year's phones, which is great. Starting off with the very first struggles early in the morning and the night before, the S23 Ultra comes with a USB-C port and doesn't have MagSafe. All the accessories around the house, studio and car are MagSafe compatible, which makes me wonder how I will adjust to not being able to snap this massive phone to various places. I picked up the 512GB version of the S23 Ultra, which apparently comes with 12GB of RAM, part of the worldwide Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 for Samsung package, which according to the materials is the most powerful chip on any Android device. It was actually a deal where I purchased the 512GB version for the price of the 256 which is not bad. Now, I didn't go for any accessories or charging equipment since I have plenty of USB-C chargers around me, most of which can top it up at a peak 45 watts. I do need to come up with a decent case for it at some point because it's massive. Talking about size, the Ultra immediately made my iPhone 14 Pro feel like an iPhone mini. However, I have to admit that it is a very comfortable phone to hold. Unlike the sharp edges of the iPhone lineup, the Ultra comes with a still angular yet much more comfortable rounded presence and to my surprise feels lighter than the smaller 14 Pro. This makes it less tiring when using one-handed. If I have to compare it with a Pro iPhone, the Ultra is the clear choice for me in terms Terms of ease of hold, if that's even a term. One thing that I find awkward, however, is the location of the volume rocker. The power button is placed ideally, but the location of the volume controls come up too high up for one-handed use given the size of the phone. By the way, I had forgotten that Android has the home screen bar option in the UI just like the iPhone. I switched to it for now, but I'm honestly not sure if I prefer the traditional buttons on the bottom more. See, with a massive phone like this, if you have the home screen bar, you rely on the UI to navigate back and forth, and in many occasions, the back experience in the apps end up being on the top. With the old school three buttons on the bottom, you have a much more ergonomic way to move back. And by the way, if you end up enjoying this video, subscribe, because why not? Stepping into the car, I immediately realized that I can't take advantage of my wireless charging pad, since it's not made for ultra size phones. <laughs> As a Waze user, I had to find a cable to test Android Auto and Google Assistant since those two components are vital for my daily commute. This car doesn't support wireless, which is fine by me because I'm not a fan of the huge delay that usually comes with wireless car charging. Uh, CarPlay. Setting up Android Auto is dead easy if we ignore some funky permission hiccups and the interface is honestly nice. I do prefer the larger app icons on the CarPlay without having to deal with an app drawer, but I digress since this has nothing to do with the S23 at all. No snows expected in Varna. By the way, next time you can also press and hold the mic button on your steering wheel to ask me anything. But that's what I did. <laughs> if anything, the 6.8 inch screen of the Ultra makes for a much better Android Auto display than any car screen. If you have a good car mount suggestion, let me know in the comments below, because I might need one. Going back to the day I grabbed the Ultra, I went ahead and shot a short unboxing video. Now, complete transparency, unboxing the latest smartphones that don't come up with anything besides a simple charging cable is becoming very boring. And at this point, I find it a bit excessive omitting all sorts of accessories, including the USB-C adapter that Samsung used to put inside. This black version of the Ultra looks like something Bruce Wayne might use. 
the frosted back glass or whatever it's called hides fingerprints perfectly and the camera array and layout is much better than those of the iPhone since the protruding rings are further apart which means that it won't be collecting as much dirt and gunk. Out of all the colors I was honestly tempted to get the military or eco green color but I couldn't resist the black. At one point during the day I remember that Samsung keeps all new devices at FHD plus resolution and not the WQHD plus which is the maximum. I did switch back and forth to see if I would notice a difference and honestly the 1080p de facto barely makes a difference to me so I kept it in the middle. I know running with max resolution might be taking a bit of a toll on the battery, maybe a tiny bit, yet overall I don't think it will make the phone bend the knee. The S23 Ultra is an absolute beast when it comes to battery life. Even though I don't use it for phone calls since my primary SIM card remains in the iPhone, I can't possibly kill it in a day. Throughout the day I slowly filled up the usual apps that I use like social media, email and some streaming services but even with that the battery stays sufficient until we started shooting some video then it gets hot and it drains out a bit quicker but that's totally normal even when i have a busy day ahead of me i try to give myself little breaks to reboot my brain lately i've been staying sharp with the help of a course called science essentials on brilliant.org i've gained an understanding of core concepts related to matter motion forces energy sound and light take the term skeptical empiricism for example what simply being a healthy skeptic means doubting theories that are not based on actual data derived from experiment and observation. And in today's world of misinformation, I think that's a crucial skill for every young professional to have. And Brilliant is never just about reading and watching, it's about doing. The interactive visualization will help you grasp new concepts, but with a fun game-like approach. The lessons are bite-sized and always to the point. To try Brilliant for free for full 30 days, visit brilliant.org forward slash this is E or click on the first link in the description below. The first 200 of you will get 20% off Brilliant annual premium subscription. All right, here's the deal. We're gonna be shooting a short of the unboxing of the new Mac Mini M2, the base model, video coming soon. So for that purpose, we have the Samsung Galaxy S23 Ultra on our top-down rig, facing horizontal positioning, which we will later crop into vertical. Plus we'll have the horizontal version if we wanna use it for something else in the Mac Mini video. One thing that I can appreciate with this phone is the mouse support. I mean, everybody else should be able to do that, right? Right? The more I use this huge phone, the more I realize that I can easily rock it without a case. It is a lot less slippery than my iPhone for some reason. Despite being an extremely big device, I barely feel it in my pocket. It looks ridiculous when I check my jeans in the mirror, but I wouldn't call it uncomfortable. The weight of the phone itself and the rounded edges make it very manageable despite the size. I know I said I can easily rock the S23 Ultra without a case, but this here is not just the case. And second, it's Pitaka's Mac Easy Case 3 with the integrated PitaFlow system. Put simply, this is like Mac safe, but for Android. Back to the day in the life. Now, I do miss the silent switcher from the iPhone, but that's okay because this device will always stay on silent. Unless I'm watching something, which on the built-in stereo speakers sound decently loud. I wouldn't call them very punchy because they lack bass, but are plenty good for content consumption. With Android, I realize how much I've missed the simple swipe down to bring down the notifications panel, followed by a secondary swipe for quick controls and brightness leveler. It feels effortless and much easier than the iPhone where I need to precisely touch the very top left portion of the screen to swipe down for notifications. Samsung have always been kings when it comes to smartphone displays and the S23 Ultra is the pinnacle as to what the company has to offer. This 6.8 inch 120 hertz LTPO display is an absolute joy to spend time on. I love prepping and editing photos in Lightroom on it. By the way, Lightroom comes in packed with the phone which is called 
called Lightroom for Samsung phones. Globally, Adobe Lightroom is now exclusive default photo editor for raw photos taken with the Expert Raw app on the Samsung phone, which can be accessed through the native gallery app on the S23 series. On another note, the size of the display is absolutely perfect to type on, although I find the Samsung keyboard a bit difficult to get used to still. Nevertheless, even if it's not for typing, this size is great for taking notes and my favorite for sketching and playing with wallpapers. By the way, if you want to grab the wallpaper that I've been working on the S23, you can do that for free on my website, which I'll link below. There, you'll also be able to support the channel by grabbing some of my 8K wallpaper packs. It's 555 and we are at 52%. Nice. So let's try to use Dex with the Apple Studio display. Now, last time I tried that with the Galaxy Z Fold 4, there was a very concerning alarm sound as if something was gonna explode. So I'm honestly not sure what to expect here. So let's give it a try. All right, it seems that the studio display is a massive charger for the S23 Ultra. Interesting to see if that works through a dock. We should try that later at some point. Okay, despite the S23 Ultra having the ability to unlock via face recognition, this is not something that I would comfortably rely on. For now, I'm sticking with the ultrasonic fingerprint reader placed under the display. It's fast and fun to use, although it's not so convenient for payments or especially authentication as Face ID. One thing that the S23 has to offer that no other device out there has built in is the S Pen. Now, I know this might not be a feature worth discussing with many, and I'm talking about people who are perfectly fine with the regular S23. But to me, this is a big deal for two reasons. Reason number one is the fact that it's part of the phone and it's always ready to use. This is massive because unlike the Z Fold, for example, or even the iPad, you don't have to worry about losing or leaving behind the pen. In fact, the phone reminds you if you leave the pen behind, which is fantastic. The immediate availability of it allows you to sign documents, jot down and explain something no matter where you are. Even browsing while fidgeting with it is awesome. Another feature that I can appreciate is using it as a remote shutter, which if you're into video, is definitely something worthwhile. The S23 Ultra cameras are awesome. I know some people were pointing out shutter lag, but during my tests, I honestly couldn't replicate that when I was comparing to the iPhone. What's more noticeable is skin tone difference, none of which is a concern since it can be easily tweaked to my liking in post. When taking 50 megapixel or 200 megapixel photos, there's a post-processing moment which is completely normal and it is magical to experience the end result once the image clears out and you realize you just saw something that your own eyes can't even focus on. It's kind of nice having this amazing zoom range, to be honest. Overall, at a glance, all cameras on the S23 are very impressive, including the front one. What I'm most impressed by this time around is the video capabilities and the overall stabilization on the UHD 60 frames per second setting. It's incredibly smooth and the quality and natural depth of field is amazing. 8K at 30 looks weird in the preview, but the actual shots are admirable too. I will be testing this more in the future as I implement the S23 Ultra in my workflow. We also did some moody A-roll tests, like talking heads, and I'll let you be the judge of the result in the comments below. Shooting A-roll with the Samsung Galaxy S23 in 8K 30 frames per second. This is the portrait video option in 4K on the Samsung Galaxy S23 Ultra. I'm usually a very easy target since I don't have any hair, but in most cases, my the top of my ears are cut off with some weird blur. So you be the judge in the comments below. Overall, I'm very impressed by the S23 Ultra. Now, I didn't expect any less from one of the best smartphones of the year, yet I'm very impressed because the S23 Ultra is the ultra refined version of the Note that I've been missing for years. The overall experience is silky smooth, the screen is the best there is, the size is manageable yet gorgeous to immerse in, the battery is amazing, and the S Pen is the cherry on top. All right, so in order to shoot an astral photo, you need to go to more in the camera app, and then from there you choose expert role, and there's this little icon here for astral. Tap that, and you have a duration. 4 minutes, 7 minutes, or 10 minutes. 
So I'm gonna leave it at 10 minutes. I have it. Uh, I have the S23 Ultra on a tripod, and I'm gonna press the button. All right. So while we wait for the Astro Photo to compile, let me just tell you that I plan on stacking up the S23 Ultra with the iPad Pro in terms of pencil and external display support and integrate them into a desk setup and see how they stack up and very i'm very curious for that and through the magic of video now you get to see the photo right away without having to stay in the cold or wait nine minutes let me know what you think as always it's been an absolute pleasure this is e or we're not